every artist has a trademark of theirs, whether it's a particular style or if it's a particular theme or genre that they paint or draw consistently. For me, one of my trademarks is actually my signature. And not just the actual signature itself, but how I integrate it within my paintings. Hello and welcome. My name is Char Rolambos. I go by Bob. I'm not your typical painter. And today we're going to talk about signatures. And I'm going to start off this video by asking you, can you find where my signature is? I'm going to show three paintings and I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and there. And I want to see if you could catch where my signature is. And to make matters easier for you to spot, currently it is two X's sharing one line and then the year. Anyway, let's get started. And here's the first painting I did on YouTube between heaven and earth. Very complex painting, by the way. One of the things about this painting is there's lots of strokes of color and brushwork, especially to make the trees and bushes. And I figured why not blend my signature among the chaos. This is a more recent painting, Restless Natives. And besides the hidden horse among the trees a little further in the distance to the right, my signature is also hidden. This painting had a combination of plants that were very lush because it could withstand the winter. And it even had some plants with leaves that would fall off or become brown. As you can see, I chose this plant here to blend my signature among the branches. And I kind of made the date 22 look like leaves. I call this one Fountain 2, and I really wish I did the filming of how I made it. I really tried to make grass, but my signature is not among the grass, or on the fountain itself. I have it on the far top left, and I make it look like it's part of the trees in the distance. There's a lot of reasons why I hide my signature in my painting. It's not because I don't want people to know who did it, because obviously I do have it signed. It's because I don't want it to be a distraction. A long time ago, my teacher said that when you sign a painting, keep this in mind that it becomes part of the composition. So if it's an eyesore, it's going to be an eyesore in your painting as well. So over the years, my signature evolved a little bit from being vaguely visible to outright hidden. And in ways, I actually have fun doing it and asking people, can you spot my signature? And for those who actually bought paintings from me, I make sure they know where it is. I am currently working on this cat painting here and already I am having ideas of where to put my signature. I have not decided yet. It might be among some of these cracks here it might be part of this plant or it might be something hidden and blurry here in the background. I do not know yet. But the point is, it will have a signature. There are many reasons why you should sign your work. You as a creator want to, in the end, put your stamp of approval on your work. And a signature is something that seals the deal. And you don't have to exactly do it at the very end because sometimes I do it when I feel like I have an opportunity. Or if you finished a painting and signed it, that doesn't mean you can't go back into it. A painting is only going to be done when you say it's done. A while back, my high school teacher was the one that said, when you sign a painting, remember it's going to become part of the composition. And that got me to change the way I thought on where to place it. What I did in the past was assign it. I would just put my signature usually bottom right or bottom left and called it a day. Little did I know how cookie cutter that was and also how much of an eyesore it would be overall because I didn't even pick nice colors. But over the years it evolved from my full name and year to a symbol of my name more on that later. 
Another evolutionary step in signing my work happened to be when I started, instead of putting it in a traditional spot, bottom left or bottom right, I did it in perspective or along the lines of something in my painting. Whether it be something like along the lines of these bars or underneath the shadows. In a way hidden, but not an eyesore. And I felt that was definitely better than being blatantly visible. And that's how I did it for several years, especially during my college days. But my next big step wouldn't happen until years later after I stopped working on artwork and had a little hiatus and had a little break from the art world and that would be integrating my signature with my paintings. The transition of integrating my signature into my paintings was made easier when I first came up with a symbol. The symbol simplified my name and therefore it was even easier to integrate into my paintings. And I chose my symbol by combining two X's and then adding the year. That way I simplified it. But besides simplifying my name into a symbol, I went a few steps more and actually integrated it within my paintings. Which leads to my next inspiration, and it happens to be the movie Blade Runner. There's a scene where Deckard is going through a bathtub and he finds a scale of a snake and he puts it under a microscope and under that microscope he was able to find who made the snake because the creator's signature is on the scale visible only if you zoom in through a microscope and that made me think what if I just do that too but not in a microscopic way but more in a way where it blends in and becomes part of the painting but besides integrating my signature in my work I also sign the back of the stretchers and usually that is when I sell a painting. I want the person who bought my painting to know how they could reach me so I usually include my signature, my full name, and my email. That way if they ever want to get in touch with me for more work they know how they could reach me. Also prior to the sale or after I usually send an email showing exactly where my signature is that way when they're looking for it they know how to find it. If you made it to the end, thanks for watching. This video was really intended to suggest an alternative way to probably sign your work. And I'm not saying to copy me exactly, but the main key takeaway about this is don't let your signature be an eyesore. And remember that it's part of your composition. Once again, my name is Charalambos. I go by Bob. I am not your typical painter and thank you for watching. Also, if you want to see if you can spot more of my signatures, check out my Instagram. Not your typical painter, of course. Alright, bye.